Great to be back here at Reliable Lending. You guys always make me feel very welcome. It's a really good energy here. You guys are full of powerhouses. And, uh, and hopefully this, today's class is going to boost you guys even more to hit more goals, more success, and, uh, and just whatever you want to achieve, you should achieve. Once again, we're going to be talking about success today because we know that we're in uh, during Spheres of Aimer, every week is a, is a different energy, is a different refinement, is a different attribute that we're trying to uplift. So today is the 32nd day of the Aimer. Lave, the heart, so the heart is very engaged today. It's a day, day to feel emotions as well. And as well, this week is the fifth week of Spheres of Aimer. And as I explain every week, the first week is Chesed, is, is focused on your kindness. The second week is Gevurah. Boundaries, severity. The third week is is, uh, is deferis, which is compassion, which is basically a combination of kindness and severity and, and, and strength is compassion. Then, the, then last week we spoke about um, netzach, which is endurance, victory, overcoming challenges. And this week, we're it's all about humility. Hod, hod. We say it every day. The first thing we say when we wake up in the morning is is moide ani, the acknowledge. Wake up in the morning, moide. We start davening. The first word we say in davening is "Hoidu la Hashem." I acknowledge you, Hashem. It's all about. It's not about being being a nobody. It's not about being being a piece of garbage. It's about being aware and, and acknowledging all the blessings that we have in life, everything that we have, being appreciative. First thing we do when we wake up in the morning is we say "Moidani," which means I woke up this morning. I was alive. Got a gratitude. How many people didn't wake up this morning? There are people who did not wake up. You know, you're you up all night. Yeah. You're up, okay, aside from the all nighters, but but yeah. first thing we wake up is we say, Thank you God for giving me another day of life. I'm only alive today because my soul, my body woke up. If it didn't wake up, then you know, God forbid. So first thing, gratitude is, is, is a key to everything in life. Being appreciative. So this whole week is all about being appreciative, but today is Netzach, victory, endurance. Because each of the spheres is comprised of all the other seven. So today's combination is the endurance and the victory and the confidence within humility. So a lot of people think humility means you're a piece of garbage, means that, that, that no, 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 you're not successful, you're a nobody, you're a doormat, people can step on you, you just let people step on you. That's what a lot of people think humility is. But that's not humility, that's just low self-esteem. Humility is actually good self-esteem. If you have healthy humility and you have a good combination of humility and endurance, that is a very, very successful combination which will really help you. Because truly successful people are also humble. And it's, it's not a contradiction. The first person we saw who did that was Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu was the most, he was the most um, famous person in Jewish history, the greatest leader in Jewish history. And at the same time, he was the most humble of all men. He was most humble. He was known to be humble. So how could you be humble and be great at the same time? How could you be so powerful, change history, influence millions of people, and still be humble? So that answer is, to get to the answer, we're also going to just talk about why Har Sinai was the smallest of all the mountains. If it was all about humility, the Torah should have been given in a valley, but instead it was given on Har Sinai, the smallest of the mountains. Because the answer is, you can't be a doormat. You have to believe in yourself. You have to be aware of all the good things that God gave you in life. Be aware of your talents. Be aware of your ability to talk, your ability to sell, your, 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 your wisdom, your looks, your talents, everything God gave you, be fully aware of them, and be, but be fully appreciative and be fully grateful for them. So that's what healthy humility is when we, can, when we have the emergence of, of hod, of humility and netzach, which is victory. That we've got to really be aware of all of our greatness. Moshe Rabbeinu was fully aware of what he achieved in his lifetime. Moshe Rabbeinu was fully aware of his greatness. He was not in denial at all. But at the same token, he was so humble. How could he have the combination of both? The answer is Hod. He acknowledged that everything that he had was a gift from God. He didn't deserve it. He, he got it. It was all given to him as a gift. All his abilities came as a gift from Hashem, and he's grateful, and he's appreciative to Hashem. And we have that attitude, and we're completely aware and proud of all our talents, all of our abilities, but we don't attribute it to ourselves. It doesn't make us feel any superior to anybody else. In fact, we can feel inferior. But look, God gave me these tremendous gifts. If God gave my gifts to anyone else, they may be doing a better job than me. So I can't attribute it to myself. It doesn't inflate my ego. The fact that I'm so amazing doesn't inflate my ego because I, because it's all a gift from God. It's a gift from above. And this is a healthy balance that if we go through life with this level, nobody will be able to step on us because we're not a doormat. We don't think that we're, we're, that we're less 
able than anybody else. Our ability is not less than anybody else. We're totally able, but at the same time, we attribute everything to God. We see this, the Rebbe was a perfect, the Rebbe is a perfect example of this as well. The Rebbe obviously, no one can even come to what the Rebbe did, and yet every single person walked past the Rebbe, from the greatest leaders to the, to the most simple people, and nobody ever felt that the Rebbe looked down at them, or the Rebbe looked at them as anything inferior, inferior to who they are. The Rebbe, no one felt that people were in awe of the Rebbe, but no one felt like intimidated, like they're being looked down at. So when you have this perfect level of believe in yourself, embrace yourself, be aware of all your greatnesses, and at the same time, you don't attribute your own greatness, this is the perfect balance to get you through life. You, you know that you can do it, you believe in yourself, and, and that's it. So this is the idea of today. This week is also a very, very powerful week because we start off this week with Pesach Sheni. On Sunday was Pesach Sheni. Pesach Sheni is the whole idea that no matter how much we screw up in life, you always get another chance. Even if you screw up willfully, if you willfully mess things up, you get another chance. Even if you are distant by your own choice, even if you you just leave it by your own choice, you can always come back. The Pesach Sheni, the message is the road is always back for your return. And yesterday we had the, uh, the yard set of Romero Balnais, a very great tzaddik. His name is a miracle because of all the miracles that he did. Romero Balnais, one of the things he's famous for, which not everybody knows, is he said that, that God loves everybody, even the worst sinners, even the people who are doing our great desire, idol worship, God still loves them as his child. Every, and he would get into a lot of arguments with his philosophy because back then it was not the widely accepted custom. But he, this is one of his values that he fought for and he pushed, that every Jew, no matter what, is always God's child. And this brings us to uh, Lag Boimer, which ends off this uh, Thursday, where, where we have the yard set of Rishon Bar Yechai. Now, Rishon Bar Yechai was, 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 was the Moish Rabbein of his generation. He was, a, he was a very holy tzaddik. And he said that even though I'm passing away today, I don't need anybody to mourn. Because when a tzaddik passes away, he goes to the next level. This, is, this represents the idea of his completion of his mission in this world. He came here for the purpose of elevating, of transforming the world. And when it, not everybody is able to complete that mission in this world. Not everybody utilizes the time to the max and is able to hit that potential fully. But at Tzaddik, he does. And Rosh Hashanah did. So Lag Boim, which is the day of his completion, this represented all the pieces of the puzzle. Every day of his life was, a, was another piece of the puzzle. Lag Boim was the day that he completed the puzzle. The picture was there. The, the revelation was there, the true power that he did. And that energy, he says, is available to us to tap into on Lag Boimer. And that's why when he passed away, there was a big pillar of fire that came down over his gravesite to show the holiness of what he was. And he said, this day should be a yanta, a day of celebration, because anybody that connects to me can tap into my mission, my purpose. So when you connect yourself to a tzaddik, you're not just connecting yourself to him physically, you're connected to all of his achievements. So we can jump in on that. Even though we didn't achieve it ourselves, we can jump in by celebrating, by going to a bonfire, and by being joyous and like Weimar. We can tap into Rabbi Shimon Bayechai's greatness and, and get all the blessings. And that's why the Rebbe gave out a lot of brachas and like Weimar, especially people who couldn't have children. They got brachas for children like Weimar, and they were fulfilled. It's a, it's, a, it's a day of holy, but whatever else we need in life, it's an important day to go to the aisle on the Lag Boimer and write a pun, write a letter for any things that you want, and, and it's going straight up. Shem Baichai will hand deliver it to God. So, uh, good night, guys. Everyone's welcome to ask questions now. This is now we get to the Fabringen time. And uh, thanks to you all for tuning in.